Enough of the amateur here. Everyone, put your hands together for Shiraz. Good luck, mate. Thank you very much for that rousing welcome. It's nice to be back here. I was here four weeks ago for my first gig. So uh, this is number 19. I was booed off the last 18, unfortunately. <laughs> there you go. And uh, nice to see Sean down here. We go way back to 8 o'clock this evening. And um, yeah, so the Olympics, got to mention it. I don't know if you know, uh, all the companies involved in the Olympics don't have to pay any tax this year. Don't know if you're aware of that, no. Gangsters. Yeah, Jimmy Carr's the biggest sponsor, obviously. No, it's cool, man. It's cool. I'll do the same thing. Had to, get, had to get a car joke in. Had to get a car joke in. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, uh, where we are today, a lot, of, a lot of life is about what we look like. How do we look? And it's about getting in the gym and getting in shape and you know, all that kind of stuff. And speaking of someone who, who used to be in the fitness industry and, and still goes to the gym and all that, I just, this year I thought, I just want to get fat and be a fat comedian. <laughs> But um, there aren't any gyms that can accommodate that. You can't go down to a gym and just sit around and eat M&Ms and drink Coca-Cola and, and get fat. So, um, and there aren't any personal trainers either for that. So I thought, well, if I want to be a fat comedian, I need to hire a fat comedian to motivate me. So I thought of um, Johnny Vegas. I don't know if you guys know him. Uh, I thought, you know, maybe he'll help me out. And I, and I just thought, how would this work? Come on, Charles, come on. We're going to get you eating some pies, <laughs> some custard cream, some pink wafers, five pints a day. Come on, Shiraz, you're not a quitter. We need you to eat those. We need to put on five stone. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's my plan for this year. Put on five stone. <laughs> and uh, a little bit about the power of the mind, though. You know, when, when you're trying to achieve something, it's, it's the power of, of your thoughts. What can you do? And uh, the, the problem is my brain, it, it, it works against me a lot of the time. It's always trying to fuck me over. You know, I can be standing in front of a, a, an audience of 300 people trying to tell jokes. And I'll be telling a, a joke and, and my brain is, starts having a conversation with me. Hey, Shiraz, you know, you don't really want to tell that joke, do you? <laughs> you know, the punchline, it's not very good. And I don't know why my, my brain speaks to me, it looks like an accent, but that's just um, by the by. And so then I'll start, I'm telling a joke, and then I start arguing with myself. Look, why didn't you tell me that earlier on when we were fucking writing the joke together? You were on my brain. Well, you know, I didn't want to say anything. You, you know, you thought it was a good joke, and you thought it was funny, but, uh, you know, I really don't think you should, you should do this. I think you should reconsider your career. Right, well, you're not fucking helping me now, so why don't you just give me a punchline, and so I can make all these people laugh? Well, you know, you need to do it yourself, meet. And, um, yeah, so my brain, brain fucks me over a lot. And in, in fact, not just in comedy, in, in all aspects of my life. Hey, Charles, you know, what you want to do is get a motorbike, because they're perfectly safe, and, you know, you can just get away from traffic, and don't worry about the accidents, just fucking get a motorbike. And, you know, your boss, what you should do is just tell her you think she's a bit cretin, you could do the job, and half the time she does. You're perfectly fine, you'll be all right. All the time my brain's trying to challenge me to do this shit. Putting ridiculous fears in my head. Hey, Shaz, you know, you're going for the swim tonight. You remember when you were eight years old and you saw Jaws and you're forever frightened of sharks? Well, just watch out in the swimming pool at David Lloyd's in Heston. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm going in the swimming pool. What? Are you saying there are sharks in there? Well, you know, just watch out. Spiders, you know, we should be very, very careful there. Bees. Um, so yeah, so I, normally I'm clean shaven actually, uh, so I do apologise, but I woke up this morning and I thought you're just a, a hat and a pair of glasses away from being LG. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a mistake. And um, actually I remember when, uh, when I was younger I was, I was, quite, I was quite naive. Um, and I, I, you know, I was very, very intent on growing a goatee and I was walking into town one day and uh, the guy tried to get my attention, I turned around and he said, bruv, bruv, he was stood next to a sports car and he had a goatee beard, so he instantly had credibility with me. He said, bruv, look, I've got these watches in the car, tags, Rolex, what would be you like, bruv? And um, 
at that time I was really into watches, it was quite a big thing, it's going back 16 years. And I thought, wow, I can get some cheap this, some watches here. I'll give you a discount, bro, you buy more than one, I'll give you a discount, you buy more than two, I'll give you a bigger discount, isn't it? <laughs> we're Asian, you're Asian, bro, I won't rip you off, I'll just teach you up, bro. I thought, oh, this is a really nice guy, you know, he's a fucking rock star, he's going to sell me some stuff out of the car. And then a voice in the back of my head said, look, Shiraz, this guy's going to fucking scam you, he's going to rip you off, walk away. And I looked at him and I said, look, mate, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to rip me off and sell me some dodgy shit. I'm not buying any more.